Hello everyone and welcome to the video. In this video, we shall be discussing about MRI imaging parameters. So let's move on to the video. Generally, we have three kinds of MR imaging parameters, namely proton density, which may be represented as PD. Then we have T1 relaxation time and finally the T2 relaxation time. Now let's discuss each of this topic in detail. The first one is proton density. Now what is proton density? Proton density means it is the concentration or the amount of mobile hydrogen protons that are available to produce an MR signal. Now those tissues that have more concentration of mobile hydrogen protons will appear bright if you take a proton density weighted image. Apart from proton density, the MR signal intensity is also proportional to gyromagnetic ratio and the strength of external magnetic field. Now we know that the tightly bound hydrogen creates a weak signal. Why? Because uh, those hydrogen protons does not have the ability to move or those hydrogen protons are comparatively immobile. Therefore, the MR signal originates from loosely bound hydrogen nuclei and they are known as mobile hydrogen. Now, if we consider the example of cortical bone, we know that the cortical bone appears black on an MR image. This is not because it does not emit an MR signal, but it is due to the absence of mobile hydrogen protons. Now, because of this, bony structures looks like air because it has low uh, percentage of mobile hydrogen protons. However, the medullary bone is visible because there are fat located in the spaces between the trabecula and in the marrow cavities. So proton density is nothing but it is just the concentration of mobile hydrogen protons that helps to produce an MR signal. Because of this, in proton density weighted imaging, fluids appear bright and the bony structures appear dark. Now, in proton density imaging or proton density weighted imaging, we are using spin echo or radiant echo sequences. So, in order to take proton density weighted imaging, either we can use the pulse sequence called spin echo or we can go with the pulse sequence called gradient echo and here we are using short TE and long TR. Now, if you want to learn more about the pulse sequences, you can go on to the video that I have made on MRI pulse sequences. So, I shall put the link in the description box. So, you can go to the description box, click on the link and see the video uh, related to MRI pulse sequence so that you may be clear with spin echo, gradient echo and terminology such as TE and TR. So TE means it is time to echo, TR means it is the repetition time. So for proton density weighted imaging, we are using spin echo sequence or we can use gradient echo sequence with short TE and long TR. Now these are the values of uh, spin density for each tissues. So here you can see the spin density value for muscle it is 90. For white matter, it is 60. For fat, it is 95. CSF, it is 100. Kidney is 95. Gray matter, 70. Spleen is 90. Liver, 90. Blood, 85. Cortical bone, 1 to 10. Lung, 1 to 5. Air, it is less than 1. So tissues having greater value of spin density will appear brighter, whereas tissues having lesser value of spin density will appear darker in the proton density weighted image. Now let's move on to the second parameter that is the T1 relaxation time. So the T1 relaxation time I have already explained in the previous videos. Uh, so I shall put the link in the description box. T1 relaxation time means it is a time taken for increase in longitudinal magnetization to reach 63% that is the T1 relaxation time. So the time taken for longitudinal magnetization to form its 63 percentage is the T1 relaxation time. So one T1 relaxation time results in relaxation to 63 percentage of M0. Now uh, the T1 of a diseased tissue will be always longer than the corresponding healthy tissue. 
okay so t1 of a diseased tissue or a pathology will be longer than the corresponding healthy tissue now this t1 relaxation time we can also call it as spin lattice relaxation time or t1 relaxation time is also known as spin lattice relaxation time and for t1 weighted imaging uh, tissues with short t1 appears bright okay so tissues having short t1 will appear bright and tissues having long t1 will appear dark in t1 weighted imaging now in t1 weighted imaging we are using gradient echo sequence with short te and short tr okay so for t1 relaxation time um, we will be or t1 weighted images for getting t1 weighted images we will be using gradient echo sequence with short te and short tr now the tissues with short t1 will appear bright and tissues with long t1 will appear dark in t1 weighted images now these are the values for various tissues these are the various t1 uh, values for uh, one tesla uh, mri magnetic field for fat the value of t1 is 180 for liver it is 270 renal cortex 360 white matter 390 spleen 480 gray matter 520 muscle 600 renal medulla 680 blood it is 800 csf 2000 and water 2500 so in uh, in t1 weighted images tissues with long t1 will appear dark and tissues with short t1 will appear bright now let's move on to the third parameter that is t2 relaxation time now t2 relaxation time is also known as spin spin relaxation time so t2 relaxation time means it is the time taken by the transverse magnetization to get reduced to its 37 percentage that is t2 relaxation time now generally in t2 weighted images tissues with long t2 appears bright and tissues with short t2 will appear dark in case of t1 tissues with long t1 appears uh, dark and tissues with short t1 appears bright whereas in case of t2 tissues with long t2 appears bright and tissues with short t2 appears dark now for t2 we are using spin echo sequence with long te and long tr so if you compare t1 and t2 we can see that we can say that uh, t2 is exactly the opposite of t1 so whatever parameters we uh, point out in t1 just the opposite happens in case of t2 for example in t1 tissues with long t1 appears dark and tissues with uh, short t1 appears bright whereas in case of t2 tissues with long t2 appears bright and tissues with short t2 appears dark now in t1 relaxation we are using gradient echo in t2 relaxation we are using spin echo in t1 relaxation we are using short te and short tr in case of t2 relaxation we are using long te and long tr now these are the t2 relaxation times for various tissues at one tesla for muscle it is 40 for liver 50 renal cortex it is 70 spleen it is 80 fat 90 white matter 75 gray matter 90 renal medulla 140 blood it is 180 and csf 200 water 2500 that means uh, for t1 as well as t2 the value of water is same it is 2500 so these are the three imaging parameters that we use in MRI that was proton density, T1 relaxation time and T2 relaxation time. So proton density means it is a measure of or it is a concentration of mobile hydrogen protons in a tissue. For T1 weighted images fluids will appear brighter and structures such as bones will appear dark because of the tightly bound hydrogen protons in bones and loosely bound hydrogen protons in fluids. Now if you take T1 relaxation, T1 relaxation means it is a uh, T1 relaxation time is a time taken so as to achieve 63 percentage of the longitudinal magnetization. Now T2 relaxation means it is the time taken to reduce the transverse magnetization to 37 percentage. So that is T2 relaxation. 
in T1 relaxation, we are using gradient echo sequence. In uh, T2 relaxation, we are using spin echo sequence. In gradient echo, we are using long TE. Um, sorry, in T1 relaxation, we use short TE and short TR. In T2 relaxation, we use long TE and long TR. So these are the three imaging parameters that we see in MRI. If you find this video useful, please like, share and subscribe and thank you so much for watching.